Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Trace video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 23. It is now time to start our third season within the MotoGP 23 career mode. So ladies and gentlemen, we will start from Portimao in the Ducati debut in pole position. I cannot believe it. We're looking at a pole position in a circuit I only acquired a single point from last season. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Ducati. So here we go then, starting from the best possible place with the Desmo Sedici GP23 and off the line. It's a decent start. Oh, just to making a bit of contact with Enea Bastina, my first time in red. And we're going to be leading the way. Full shot into the primary corner. We are leading the MotoGP sprint for the third season. This is exactly what I dreamt of when I signed that contract at the end of the second season. No more KTM, no more RC16. We're on the best bike in the grid and look at the difference already. We're up by seven tenths of a second going in to the Tour VIP. Oh my goodness, is this bike really that powerful? Of course, we topped the winter testing and we looked absolutely fabulous with the new package of the Ducati. And I've got to say, I feel confident in the practice i was right on it in the qualifying my 36 9 was only five tenths of a second slower than my lap time set in the jackhammer video just a few weeks ago so ladies and gentlemen this bike is the real deal every single season i've been doing in motor gp career mode my lap times have been woeful compared to time trial and quick races no more ladies and gentlemen we're only losing a bit now this is huge if we can be successful in a circuit like here in Portimao, where we have only, as I say, in two seasons, acquired a single point over two sprints and two featured races. Now we're looking at a possible 12 right here, right now, in the Ducati debut. Ladies and gentlemen, what a perfect start, but this is not over yet. We do know that AI tend to struggle a little bit on the first lap, and Maverick Vinales is only now three tenths of a second behind us, so this is not over. We've got to be on our best performance here, our best behaviour on the Ducati debut. I feel like it's a tremendous pressure going into this one, but I'm ready for it. I am ready. I am a little bit worried that we're going to run away with this one because in the practice, it just came natural to me. After the winter test as well, the bike feels absolutely fantastic, but I've got to say, I'm still expecting more from the hardest difficulty AI. The 120% AI do not yield and I'm expecting them not to either here. But since we've moved on from the KTM, I tell you what, both Jack and Brad had a good weekend. Jack Miller standing in second, there's Binder in fifth. The two KTMs are right there in it. Not seeing anything from the Gas Gas, if you can believe it. I was actually offered a contract again with the Gas Gas brand for Tech 3. But yeah, can you imagine that? All the hype surrounding the off-season, a potential chance to move to Ducati. It's what the fans wanted. It's what I deep down wanted. I just wanted a bike that was successful and able to fight against the 120% difficulty AI. And we have it. Otherwise, we could have gone to Gas Gas and just relived Season 1 again. That'd be a dreadful. It's, it's one of the worst teams. In fact, it is guaranteed the worst team in MotoGP 23 career mode. Lap times of the gas gas were absolutely shocking. You're talking like, we're looking like a 140 across the line here with the Factor Ducati across the line at 136.7. Brilliant lap time. Wait, that's two tenths of a second quicker than the pole position lap time. <laughs> we're still getting better on this motorcycle. It's happening. It's happening. I'm going to be competitive in every race. I hope so. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves, so we must stay even keeled. Although it's good stuff so far, we're only nine tenths of a second ahead of Maverick. And the AI do get stronger as the race progresses. And with us having to suffer fuel uh, depletion and tyre degradation where the AI does not, there's still every chance to get back into this. But as I mentioned at the beginning of the winter test, the, the bike is just unbelievable. It's, it's almost a cheat code to move over to this brand so far. This is my first race in, and this is what I'm thinking. It might even out as we go to Termester Rio Hondo the next race. If we're competitive there, and we can get, I don't know about podium, but we'll have to think about something reasonable, maybe a top five. 
even in the points comfortably, we have to be looking at World Champion of the Season. That's do or die for me nonetheless. Last season's theme was letting battle commence and going full send. This year, it's about staining the entire championship in red. Dominating in the red. Just doing everything we can, being the face of the Bologna team and making sure we win in style. And so far, part one of the contract is going to be a done deal, but across the line... So we have dropped down to the 37s again, and Maverick is in within five tenths of a second, okay? Maybe job not done yet. Still looking for that dream Ducati debut. And I think so far, the pole position was already a dream Ducati debut. Looking like Alvaro Batista back in 2019 in World Superbike. This is marvellous. And of course, guys, if you are enjoying the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It does help out the channel. And, uh, yeah, it keeps you inundated with plenty of MotoGP content as we go deep there for the Tour VIP. A little mistake coming in on the uh, fourth lap of seven in today's sprint. It's just uh, oscillated ever so slightly there because of the nature of going deep into Tour VIP. It just brings you back in as you get back on the power. And already, we're on it enough to have a good effort and a good contention of being right there with it to get another solid 136 lap time. If we could say in the 136s every single lap, then there's no way we'll be beaten here. I'm a little bit cautious about moving over to power setting two for the race. I don't know how well the tire degradation holds up and I don't know how well the fuel is for these motorcycles. It did say medium and high for the uh, aforementioned two options. So I'm still hoping that we can do well with power setting two. These are the big questions though. This is what I was asking to start the season. Where did we struggle with the KTM? We struggled with acceleration. We struggled with late, uh, late pace speed against the AI because of course they're so damn good. We struggled with lack of fuel. And there we are now, three laps in a row, very close to it together, just looking perfect with this wonderful Ducati. And the big thing for me is I took a hit by reducing the engine power in the winter test. And if you've caught up with that video, then you'll know what I'm going to say here. But if not, then I'm pushing so much for this exit speed. Oh, I got a little bit of a wheelie there. I wanted to really show it to you, and I kind of messed it up. But in the winter test, we were firing out of those left-handers, some of the right-handers as well, coming out of the gallop, etc. And just having oomph, gall, and gumption to just push at the maximum. Now with the KTM, I would go full power. Actually full power on the right trigger, on the R2 button on the PS5 controller, and I'd get nowhere. The rear tire wouldn't even spin. There wasn't even enough power. But here, I am coming out of corners, hooking up nicely into the apex, firing out to turn 11, as you can see here, and the bike just sticks, planted. It's beautiful. And it's that speed we were missing. So many races last season, coming out of Bud, for example, last season coming out of that right hander into turn three you get on the power ai just drops me by the time i get up to full speed i'm already way behind because of lack of power no more ladies and gentlemen we're not doing it again we have power we have speed we have confidence this is gonna be it gotta keep on it though maverick is still getting that gap down to half a second every lap another lap time there into the 136 is that more or less identical to the qualifying lap time but we've done two laps in the space of this six lap race so far and two of them have been better than the actual pole position lap record yesterday that's well today i only recorded it a couple of moments ago <laughs> well i didn't record the qualifying but you get what i'm saying unbelievable look at it look at that the bike is just excellent i can see why everyone was telling me to go to ducati not necessarily the Grassini, the VR46, etc., but the factory Ducati with this much power, it's terrific. It's like racing quick try a quick mode or time trial. It's that good. I don't think it's quite there yet. As you can see with the lap times, I still think there's more time to be gained. But possibly, if I jump to a time trial and maybe try and compare against this Portimao lap time, I think I would be pretty close with the Desmos Sajichi GP23. But I've got to say, Maverick is still not deterred. 
He is going to be 9 tenths of a second as it stands going into th turn 13, but into the Sagresh corner, and then for 15 in a moment for the Galp. I think he might close in a little bit. Not enough to scare us, but we're just going to have to be a bit careful, because it's still only one mistake and Maverick's going to be right there. We're not out of the woods. But judging on the graphic in the left-hand corner of your screen, this is a guaranteed podium. As Maverick is closing in a little bit, another, well, identical lap time there on the penultimate lap here today's sprint. And here Bastianini is still a good couple of tenths behind us, which I'm surprised. All A lot of races last season, he was just out like a shot. And he was unbeatable. We've turned into Bastianini. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Onto the power now coming out of turn three and into turn four. The gap is now approaching one second. In fact, it's over one second. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Ducati Dream Delight. D debut Delight. Can't even say it. There's too many Ds there trying to match it all in for the perfect alliteration. I can't believe it. This is amazing. But I'm a little bit disappointed they've not challenged me. I kind of expected to be uh, fighting all the way. But you know what? Just take your cake and eat it. <laughs> Be grateful. <laughs> Be grateful. Don't start getting too uh, sentimental wishing I had the KTM anymore. I can't. I couldn't. The KTM was two seconds slower than this bike. That's a lot of time to lose to be still competitive and fight for a world championship. It's... Oh, my goodness. I've lost a bit of time here, actually. Let's not lose focus here. Guys and girls, we're, the, the gap to Maverick is five tenths. This stage in the previous lap was nine tenths. We've got to keep it together here. It's not quite the Ducati debut yet. It's not the perfect debut yet. Davide Tarvotzi, keep it in, mate. Keep it together, because we're just one more corner away from being not only a MotoGP sprint winner with the Ducati team for the first time, but a first-time world championship leader in the Premier Class. That's a class act. Beautiful as I'm on the grass there for some reason. Stunning performance. Yeah, Maverick was quite close. He was closing at the end there. Good couple of lap times there as well as the top nine competitors will receive uh, championship points. And Jorge Martin at the end there. 35-9. But down in 18th. There's always a weird lap time at the end there, isn't it? Unbelievable. But yeah, perfect Ducati debut. And look at that. Look at that. For the very first time in MotoGP 23 career mode in the Premier Class, we have the championship lead. Marvellous. So let's move across now to the race itself. We wait for the red light to disappear. I'm hoping to get another perfect start here. And I'll tell you what, it's not bad. And Ian Bastini's dropped down to fourth. Oh, he's, he's, he's right there. He's going to go for the lunge into turn one. Not quite brave enough. In fact, oh, he is. Bit of contact going into the first corner. And I will not get the whole shot. Here comes Maverick. Oh, ho, ho, ho. a big hit on Maverick Vinales. And I'm going to try and go back on my old stable mate. Jack Miller, as it does that weird glitch. It's done the weird glitch. It's done the weird glitch, ladies and gentlemen. Everything's gone Hector Hambask here. We're dropping down to fifth. No more championship lead as we go hard on the anchors. I know the AI struggle going into the tour VIP. Not for me. Using them all as a bit of a battering ram. See, that's exactly what I was saying to you earlier. Look at this. Look at this. The gap there to Jack Miller. We gain two tenths of a second just by opening the throttle. The KTM has not improved its acceleration in our career mode. That is massive. But he's right there. Oh, goodness me, he gave us a big hit, big hit there as well. Is he going for a lunge? Surely not. I did anticipate a lunge going into turn 10 or turn 11. He's still right on it. In fact, it's the beast. The beast is approaching. In fact, it's time to get the rivalry going again, isn't it? He's not going to be best pleased I won that sprint. It's time to really get it going as we, again, have the acceleration. To fly ahead of Jack Miller as we just touch the apex. Just calm down. Don't need to be getting too excited here as Maverick Vinales is on the grass. Goodness me. It's getting a bit wild, a bit scary here to start the next, uh, the, the first race of the third season. As we get on the power. Show me that power. Look at the Ducati speed. We even wheelied and we're still going to get ahead of uh, Jack Miller. And we're not even on power setting three, ladies and gentlemen. Unbelievable. This is what Mark Marquez felt in Qatar. <laughs> Absolute speed and power. Seven tenths of a second. We are now ahead of Enea Bastianini. In fact, Jack Miller's still fighting back. Even with power setting two 
I don't think we're actually losing that much time. Of course, the first lap doesn't really count since we started from a standing start. But 139.7, we were doing a 138 something earlier in the sprint. I actually didn't quite see in the first lap. But as it is, we would have a 10 point championship lead over an Air Bastini. I mean, we didn't even have a championship lead ever at this, at this point in the Premier Class. And now, look at us. In the third season. I wonder if we can pull like the Jorge Lorenzo. Third or fourth season. Dominate the World Championship by getting a, a, and surmounting a huge championship point lead. My big question marks are the likes of Termas de Rio Hondo. If we're doing well here in Portimao, I've got to find out for Termas de Rio Hondo next, uh, uh, next race. I've got to look into the Saxon ring and then maybe a few more as well. But we have just progressively got better at this game. The bikes are progressively getting better. And then finally, it seems to be evening out against the hardest difficulty AI. We have had two very grueling seasons to fight against the hardest difficulty AI. And now look at us, leading by a second across the line. It's not quite a 36, but the lap times aren't too far away. Deviating about three tenths of a second slower than where we were in both the qualifying and the fast lap of the race in the sprint just a couple of moments ago. And of course, guys, don't forget, if you are enjoying, don't forget to like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. I won't say it again, but I would really appreciate the assistance. And as long as you're enjoying it, that's all what really matters, but I'd like to do more content for you very soon, so don't miss it if you're uh, not subscribed. But a bit deep there into the Tor VIP, that's cost us time, but we're quite fortunate because as you get back on the power, you can sort of even out the mistake you've just made. It's one of those corners that, yeah, you lose time, but you'll get it back again. So, a bit of positives with every negative, of course. Now, I didn't really recall what lap times I was doing in the, the, the race or sprint. I think the sprint was wet last season with the KTM, but uh, the actual race itself I'm quite certain with power setting 2 we were in the 38s I know in winter testing we were pushing to get a 137 the difference is night and day and it's made the 120% difficulty just feel... It, it, I've got a belief now that we can actually win this as we are really close to the apex of turn 14. Let's uh, not scare ourselves and the fans. So we go now to the right hand side. Oh, we're actually going to be improving if we nail this corner right out of the gallop and onto the power. Tight to the apex, not wheeling this time, just turn in a little bit and then you go. Another low 37. Not a problem, but I would really like to see some 36s in there again. I just feel confident. I feel happy. Oh, we're off the circuit. I did feel like we were going a little bit too deep there. Well, I, felt I might be able to save it, but uh, yeah, clearly I did not. So, <laughs> we are still leading, but we have taken a small hit to our lap time. Lap times we're looking at uh, probably around a 37, 3 or 4. Again, I'm making a small mistake into the Tor VIP. We've got to just calm down here. Don't need to be losing focus. That is, that's a bad lap time coming in now, it really is. Keeping on the power, keep it in tight, and Airbastini in second, Miller third, Maverick in fourth, with Mia Zarko and Binder and Oliveira. Not seeing much of Brad Binder, to be honest. It's good to see him back in our MotoGP career mode. But we're also at the same token, it's very sad to see Peko Banyaya get the boot. Fancy booting a two times MotoGP world champion. Back to back champion since Mark Marquez in 2018 19, respectively. And he's gone. <laughs> he's gone. He had one season when he finished third, and he was like, nah, you're done. <laughs> you're out of there. And Nea has just dominated. He's the man. He's the future. But I will say, on a realism side, on a realistic side, I would be livid if I was an Air Bastini. We had such a rivalry when I was on board the KTM that signing effectively the enemy would be the worst thing you could do. And Air Bastini does not deserve another strong teammate after winning the MotoGP World Championship. You'd think he would get someone not quite on his level, but enough to help him progress. I know there's a lot of riders. I think uh, Rossi was disappointed that uh, Yamaha signed Lorenzo back in the day. So right here as well, I imagine that Bastini would be miffed. <laughs> I imagine that so much, very, very much so as we go into the Tour VIP again. A little bit out of shape, but it's not a problem. 
So we get back on the power. We have green in the delta. We had green in the delta. But I think there's a lot of time to be gained going into the final couple of corners. I made a mistake earlier into Sagresh and I don't plan on making that mistake again. A little bit of a wheelie coming in with power sitting too. I don't know if I'm just uh, getting a bit eager on the power here. Just pressing it a little bit more than required due to the power setting two. Good to see Jack Miller's doing well as well, actually, because bear in mind, how many races last season did Jack Miller crash? Almost every other race. Maybe the bike wasn't set up for him. I mean, we're just using default setup, but the actual improvements on the bike were more so for me. In fact, that's a lie. Jack was always the team leader. So that's his fault that the bike didn't do very well. I won't take blame for that as we get caught on the kerb. Ooh. That was a scary moment. The, the wheel just lifted into the air for absolutely no reason whatsoever. I don't know why it does silly things like this in this game. Go on the kerb. Let's wheelie. <laughs> wheelie for absolutely no reason. But on the kerb again going into Prime Era. I felt like I was going to go a little bit deep by getting onto the kerb. But it's all good. Things are still going swell here in the middle part stages of the race. Lap time still hovering around a 137 low. Again, would be about a second to a second and a half quicker than the KTM. Just bear that in mind. The old saying goes, let that sink in. Don't know what the sink needs or what it wants, but let that sink in. It clearly wants to see our performance here on board the Ducati. The Bologna bullet. Loving the new helmet design from Sergio23. It looks absolutely amazing. We're really embracing the Lenovo Monster Energy Ducati. This is going marvellous. Oh, I felt really good braking there to port him out. Actually finding a bit of confidence into that right-hander. It's a very innocuous corner to get right. It's one of those corners I, I love going into it, but I tend to tense up a little bit before taking it and question where I'm going to brake. Everything else is on a flowing scale. But just that one I'm never too sure of. Just caught a glimpse of the soft rear tyre there. And I've got to say, that looks fantastic. Considering we're now coming up to the halfway point. The bike, the tyres, are just in perfect unison. Onto the power here. We're going to find a 136. Across the line, it is a 136.937. Unbelievable. Power setting two. Lap time as good as the qualifying pole position. Ladies and gentlemen, for content, have we made a mistake for going into the Ducati? Is this going to be too easy? Or are we going to get our comeuppance at some point? I think we are. I'll probably end up binning it. I don't think I'll bin it here, though. I feel really great. Probably the first time in a while I can say I've really felt solid here in Portimao. Probably in the video with Jack, I felt really good doing the laps there. I really gelled with the KTM in that video. And now here with the Fatch Ducati, it's just, <laughs> it's, it's brilliant. It's absolutely amazing. I'm having so much fun. I've got a huge smile on my face, ladies and gentlemen. I, I really, that's really tight to the apex there. That was so close. I dropped the front there in winter testing not so long ago. Did the video for that just a couple of hours ago. So yeah, uh, I know exactly how that one felt going into turn eight. Lost a bit of time but certainly does not have any cause to concern. 136.9. I don't remember that if the AI got into the 136s last season. I don't believe they did. I don't even remember. I think maybe Bastini was in the 137.5, something like that. So as far as I'm concerned, the AI did not get stronger. And regarding the team's comparisons, they are very much identical to last season. I would imagine that to change a lot in the Hareth test, or possibly even into the Silverstone test. But for the off-season, nothing really changed that much. So as far as I'm concerned, if we're beating Bastini now, in a track that we only received a point in last season, then there's no reason we can't beat him everywhere else. The likes of the Circuit of the Americas, he was too strong for us there last season. I think Maverick Vinales won one of those as well. So did Peko, if I'm not, not, if I'm not mistaken. Hareth, of course, we won both of those, but that was a thrilling fight. That could be very interesting this time with the Ducati. Don't know how we got on with Le Mans. I think uh, we crashed because it was a wet race, I think. But on the Gas Gas, we had the Sprint Podium, which we did not... We weren't able to achieve that in the KTM, which is the factory 
branded Red Bull KTM, of course, which uh, Jack Miller and Brad Binder are on currently. I'll tell you what, I'm really impressed that Joanne Mir has just stayed in fifth place. The status quo for him right now in fifth is marvellous for the number 36. Maverick Vinales are in 12th, so that would put him third place in the championship, I think. He'd just lose a bit of points to an Air Bastini, so it's going to be almost the absolute perfect weekend for the Ducati team. I took the sprint victory, I took the pole position. And Nea Bastien's going to take second, and I'm probably going to win this one, unless something disastrous happens. And then Nea took third in the sprint, so unless... Just one position away, it would have been the absolute perfect weekend. Incredible. Absolutely amazing. On to the power here. This is going to be a bad lap time. It's another 137.7. Just creeping in there in the latter stages of today's video. But into the... <laughs> The bike was screaming a little bit there, just a premature downshift, only ever so slightly. But what it was enough to, uh, to get the engine brake to kick in and get the Ducati to slow down. Now onto the left hand side for turn four, onto the power. As you can see, bike just grips so well, just getting a bit eager, just lifting the front end ever so slightly. But other than that, this, this is terrific. I, I'm honestly so absolutely chuffed. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think about this decision to go over to the factory Ducati. Do you think uh, it could be a bit too easy? Of course, you guys have probably played a lot more seasons than I have. It just takes me a time to get through them. But already, the, the immediate feeling is fantastic. It all depends on how many wet races we get and how they feel. Because if we get then now another 18 wet races, I still don't think we can win the championship. I just don't think it's possible. Not against the hardest difficulty AI. Maybe if we remove tyre wear, but I don't think we should remove the tyre wear now if that's the case. If we're winning in races like this, then I think we stick to the challenge. Beat the 120% difficulty AI for a full MotoGP season. I kind of got to get a hurry on with the career mode as well now, because I've got an immense amount of stress and pressure about MotoGP 24. I have to get this done. I have to win this season before the 24th installment of MotoGP arrives. I cannot end this year's game without a championship. I'd be devastated. One Moto3 in the rookie. One Moto2 in the rookie season as well. But winning MotoGP will take us at least a minimum of three full seasons. We're still looking good though. We're looking good to start this one. I got the championship lead down to seven points last season in Silverstone. In a, uh, excuse me, in the Catalonia sprint. And here we are. The <laughs> first time in Ducati. I am a little bit disappointed in one regard that I couldn't get the job done with the RC16. I really wanted to win with the KTM. I've never won a championship with the KTM before. I never even chose the KTM in a career mode. I've also never chose Moto uh, Ducati in a MotoGP career mode either. So this is brand new. It's fresh and it's incredibly exciting. I'm ready for this year. I really am. The gap is now approaching five seconds. Just think of that. In those five lap times, six lap times, whatever, whatever you want to look at behind there from the laps we've been doing so far, in last season's race, we would be losing a second per lap on every single one of those laps. A minimum. Probably even more, but a minimum a second. Right now, that means an Air Bastion will be leading by at least a second or two. The difference is going to be night and day. Absolutely night and day. I don't know how long the video was last season, but I imagine it was probably longer. Although I think we got took out in the sprint from Paul, so maybe it won't be. But the actual race itself is going to be significantly longer than this. this I'm, I'm really pleased. <laughs> I'm absolutely made up, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys are as well. To see us do well, to see us be victorious here, is going to be amazing. I'm really pleased. Onto the brakes, into the Tour VIP. We've got three more laps to go then, ladies and gentlemen. It's gone really fast for me. I kind of hope it's gone fast for you guys too. But, uh, and the Ducati, of course, it is uh, already going rather fast. Lap time's instantly quicker. So we're probably saving a good, maybe, 
15 seconds per race, <laughs> provided we don't make a mistake, each video will be at least 15 seconds shorter. <laughs> Maybe no, even more. It'll be uh, plus the seven of the sprint. So we could be looking at, I don't know, maybe like 22, 25 seconds shorter. <laughs> I don't know. Depends how long I talk at the end, I guess. This is brilliant. I just feel one with the Ducati right now. Really, really solid. As I say, guys, let me know in the comments section down below. I, I need to hear from you guys regarding your career mode. Was it the same for you? Was it instantly jump on the Ducati, feel the power, feel the excitement and the speed? and just bring success. Look at that gap to an Air Bastini there. Just take a look in the bottom left hand corner of your screen. We've just crossed the line with a 137.5 and there's a huge battle going on for second place. Looks like Jack is not closing in but it's still close enough to an Air. And then behind him is Maverick Vinales, Joan Mir, Joan Zarco, Jorge Martin. Ooh, pay attention just making a few funky shapes there into the Largos corner. Two laps to go. I don't really want to throw it to the scenery now. We crashed in Qatar last season, of course, chasing an Air Bassanini. In fact, circle that on the calendar as well. I'd love to get revenge against an Air in that one. I was able to take the sprint victory after he did some bizarre things in the, in the sprint. But they're uh, not possible in the race. Of course, if you're not caught up with all of the uh, MotoGP stuff, I'll probably end up spoiling a lot of the KTM, so I'd recommend you go and watch the rest of them first before s continuing the season, because I am bound to spoil a lot from the previous year. And all those people who have watched and viewed since the beginning, just want to say a big thank you for supporting the channel. There's been a lot of people, I think, more excited about my career mode than their own, so <laughs> I appreciate that. I think even Max B once said that to me. He was looking forward to my video more than himself playing the game. I think I, don't, I think it was him. If it was, shout out to you, Max. I appreciate all the support. And I appreciate all the channel members recently as well. i really, really grateful and uh, want to show my gratitude to you all. But uh, before we start getting sentimental and thanking the fans and thanking the boys in Bologna, we've got to pull it. We've got to bring it home. Across the line, it's our only 38 of the race. A 138.4. If I'm not mistaken, that was probably our best lap on board the KTM last season. And that was a shocker lap time for me. The benchmark. Everything's changed. Who's that doing the long lap penalty? Well, they're not doing the long lap, but they've just come out near the final corner. Who is that? They've had a shocker. It's really spaced out. There must have been a lot of crashes coming from behind. Of course, I've not seen any yellow flags. There we are on the big screen in the, dis in the distance as well. Do you see that? <laughs> Great shot of the new MotoGP Championship leader. And Air Bassini, take a step back. Our championship is on. The biggest point as well is that this is the craziest part for me, is the fact our immediate objective is to take over the manufacturer team role. So basically, I want to be the first rider in the Ducati team and lead the progression for this wonderful team. I think we can, and if we're Pulling out stunts like this and performing well, I don't see why we can't. Ladies and gentlemen, we are just four, excuse me, what am I talking about? Four, it's only like three corners away. Quick look behind us, there's absolutely no one in sight, even on this shocker of a lap time. Who cares? We're bringing it home. It is going to be the Ducati debut delight. The Ducati dream debut we will cross the line in first place in the race. Victory goes for us on board the Ducati, and we are having the time of our lives. A perfect weekend here in Portimao. So confirmation on your screens, guys and girls, and Joan Mir did stay in fifth place for the entire race, it seems. So any surprises down the order? Frankie Morbidelli with a fast slap of the race right at the end, and uh, Gusto Fernandez is by far the, to the hardest rider, hardest working rider at the end of there. Nea Bastini second in the World Championship. Jack Miller third. Maverick Vinales fourth. This is game on. Look at us at the top of the pile. Oh, I could cry. <laughs> it's absolutely magnificent. I'm a proud man right now, guys and girls. We've done it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching the video. I certainly hope you enjoyed. Look at us even leading the team's championship as well. And, of course, we'll be leading the Constructors' 
also. So guys, thanks for watching. I'll not keep you any longer. Thanks for watching. See you in, in the next one. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Ciao for now. Oh, hi. Didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Trace content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dr. Ace video.